All right, I'm Dr. Terrence Espinosa. This video will be the first of a series that will show you how to set up and use your Accordance library system. Uh, I'm using a PC, I'm running Windows 10. I know Mac is slightly different in how it looks and then the shortcuts are different, but the functions are the same. So uh, first of all, uh, the first thing to do to set up your library, uh, you can go to Edit and Preferences. So you're opening preferences, and we're going to go through preferences in this video. So either go to edit and preferences, or you can hit, if, you have, if you're on a, a, a PC, you can hit control, comma. Control and comma together will open your preference bar. So either control, comma, or edit and preferences. And one more time, the more traditional way, I suppose, edit preferences. And now what we're going to do is set up how we want Accordance to look. And I won't use every single box. That would be quite a long video. We'll only uh, go to the boxes that I use most often, even though I will click on them one at a time. So the Amplify, uh, when, you, on, when you're in Accordance, you can triple click a word or a text and certain things will happen. So if you are uh, triple clicking an English text, for me, I want it to go to uh, a good dictionary. So Erdman's Dictionary is very good. Holman is, is good. The others are okay. Easton's is, is very old and out of date. Um, Wren's also not great. Smith's old and out of date. Webster's Dictionary old. So if you have Erdman's Dictionary, go with that. Otherwise, pick a dictionary of your choice or an encyclopedia of your choice for an English word. For Greek, if you, when you have the Greek text, it depends on the lexicon that you want uh, to use. And so uh, I have probably a few you don't. Low and Nida, if you have them, they're very good. Um, Mounts is okay. Um, it's probably, it's better than Strong's. Um, Strong's is all right, but not really good for definitions. It's more of a concordance. The dictionary is of middling tier um, quality. So Low and Nida, I would say number one. Um, Mounts would be number two. Uh, this one, TLNT um, by Seslaw Speak, S-P-I-C-Q. This is an outstanding theological lexicon. If you have it, that's great. The only issue is it won't have every single Greek word in there because they need more space to give you a page or two of an actual uh, mini essay on how the word's been used through through time. Uh, and so TLNT it was an outstanding lexicon to know of in general, but it's not complete. And so uh, I choose Low and Nida. You can click on Mounts. Either of those two will work for you. I recommend either of those two for Hebrew. For Hebrew, if you have the Concise Dictionary of Classical Hebrew, this is a new one by Kleins. That's the, the author, C-L-I-N-E-S. That's an outstanding. It's like an eight or ten volume set. It's enormous. It's very expensive. The one volume Concise Dictionary is also very good. So that's the one I have uh, set to my default uh, Hebrew lexicon. If you have BDB or BDB abridged, that's also outstanding. This is the classic uh, Hebrew lexicon to use. And you, it may come with your package that you, you bought. And so... Either the Concise uh, DCL or the BDB. Either of those two is going to be an outstanding resource for you. BDB is a little older. DCL is newer. Uh, TLOT is another outstanding lexicon. Um, it's like the other one for New Testament. It's not going to be complete because they discuss significant words and give a, a lengthy space to discussing the meaning of the words, but they won't have every single word necessarily in there. So BDB or Concise DCL. The Kohlenberger Mounts Hebrew is also a good one. If you if you have that, use that. It's better than Strong's. But if I have the choice of what's in the screen in front of me, I'd go uh, DCL number one, BDB my second choice. Third choice would be Mounts. Fourth choice would be Strong's if that's all I had. And any of them will work for you. Latin, we don't really use Latin. I don't use Latin. Uh, it's a little later than my area of focus, which is the biblical world. Um, and Latin was spoken back in the first century, but it wasn't really used for biblical literature so much. So uh, don't worry about that so much. Commentary, re verse reference. So uh, Tyndale Commentary is a very good introductory level uh, commentary. It's it's going If you have it, and it often comes with the packages in accordance, use that. Um, I also have Word Commentary. It went on sale a while ago. It's still pricey, but but certainly on sale. The other commentaries, McGarvey is not great, Barnes isn't great, Knowledge Commentary isn't great. A lot of these are going to be very, very old, out of date, and suspect to the prejudices of their day. Matthew Henry, hundreds of years old. Uh, same for Jameson Fawcett Brown. Um, yeah, they're not. They're just not great for academic research, uh, unless you are a historical theologian trying to discover what people thought hundreds of years ago. 
uh, with the knowledge that they had at the time. So Tyndale is great to use. Uh, and what this means, if you click on a verse in a Bible, if you triple click on it, it'll open up to one of these commentaries. Uh, I would usually choose Word or Tyndale, but whatever commentary you use is, is going to be fine. Uh, if you have key numbers, um, I don't know why I don't have low end. I guess I'm more interested in what mounts does as, um, as a thought experiment. Low and Ida would be probably better for Greek. Uh, but low and Ida amounts, either one is fine. Uh, and then for Col for Hebrew, yeah, Kohlenberger mounts, those are okay. Uh, I don't use key numbers to search for words, so I don't really care so much about these. But again, you can be consistent and change them to your other preferences as well. So let's do that. All this means when you triple click on a word in Greek or in Hebrew, it's going to open a lexicon or a dictionary. Lexicon is what we call them in, in biblical studies. And so you're choosing which lexicon to open them into. Op yeah, which lexicon to open up when you triple click a word. All right, so that's Amplify. The rest won't be nearly as long, but that's a really important one to get straight um, based on your library. Uh, this is the standard font and size, and whatever you want is fine. Uh, keyboard shortcuts, if you want to have new shortcuts, is great. It, this, shortcuts are great. Uh, it's definitely worth looking into, but you can do that on your own workspaces. I don't. You can mess with that. That's fine. I, I don't. Um, yeah, again, more basic search functions. You can, you can set font and color. So this is less important to me for what we're doing. User notes, don't really worry about. But again, you can go through those exports. I don't, yeah, I don't mess with those. You can if you'd like to. Greek and Hebrew, okay. So options for Greek and Hebrew. So this is in our class what we're into. Um, I don't mess with the keyboard so much. The automatic final letter, automatic final letters. If you're typing a word and it has a final form, it'll click it automatic. It'll change automatically to that. That's fine. The critical marks are fine. Um, I use traditional terms for for the verbal aspect labels. We'll get it when we get into Hebrew a little further. These are the terms we'll use. So try traditional terms for that. Um, I don't really met. This is pretty much set. I haven't changed this since I bought Accordance. So while it's a Greek and Hebrew and is our area of expertise, there's not a lot to do here for us. Uh, Unicode. Oh, you know what? Uh, this So uh, the SBL font is a really good font to use. It's the, it's the font of record for academic studies, but it's fine. I don't, you can change it later on. This is when you're cutting and pasting Hebrew and Greek texts. Okay, compare text, sure, it's details. Okay, so the main one to look through for us is going to be Amplify. That was our first box. The rest of these we don't really need to worry about so much. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. This has to do with with verbs and other grammatical elements and leave them to default citation. I uh, don't mean you can use automatic citation, but you can't trust it. It's not exactly right for what we're doing uh, in our area. Even if it says it is, you can't trust it. So for me, again, it's a big whatever. Turabian is the closest we have. I prefer SBL personally, but Turabian is what our school uses. It's actually a hybrid between Turabian and SBL. So again, more Inside baseball. Let me just look through the rest. I think for us, let's see, map layers are interesting in general. We're not using maps in our class, but this is a really good feature of accordance. And timeline as well. Timeline is is really it's a good feature that comes within accordance, um, but we're not really um, using it in our class. Still, I can change these to reputable texts. Oh, maybe not. All right. Word chart tabs. It's font, not a big deal. Updates, automatic. So really all this was mostly to show you the Amplify. So that's one part of, of setting up your accordance is going through to this, this uh, preferences, really taking time and going through the Amplify and setting these up. Once you're set there, that's, that's a good way to go. The second thing to do uh, here is going to be setting up your library preferences. And what I mean is this. So now you can go to uh, window library. So now whenever I open accordance, this library always appears. And I like it that way. I had a blank here just to show you how to open it up. 
but this is how you show your library. There is a shortcut for library. You can probably see it right here. It's control alt one. So if I hit control alt and one, oh, <laughs> I hit the wrong one. Control alt one. There we go. I used my keypad at first. So control alt the number one. There you go. And this is nice because the recently opened tab uses the books that you used most recently, which is usually when you're in deep in study, that's really helpful. Texts, these are alphabetical. They're not, they're, I don't use this, I skip this entirely. For us, go to tools. And so for, um, let me make this a little bigger just so we can see it. You can shrink it back up to normal size later. Uh, tools, again, the, the important thing here is the order that you have each type of book is the order that it'll appear when you double or triple click uh, uh, within accordance. And so for commentaries, the best commentaries that I have are gonna be the Tyndale commentary because it's complete, Word Biblical commentary with the updates. Those are outstanding. Uh, NetBible notes are good. NetBible is a, it's a good study Bible level book. It has some really good grammatical helps for us. So this is something to be aware of and we'll look into it as we do translation together. Beyond that, the rest of these are bloatware. Is that too hard to say? Is that That's fair. They're not useful for academic research. If you're a historical theologian working on what Calvin thought or Luther, that's fine. But they are so, then they're important, but they're not current and they're not up to the academic standards for modern research. So while they're always important to consult, you consult them after you've done or in the much larger body of research that you're doing. So all the other commentaries, these are all out of, date and they're free online that's why they're here so every every package accordance logos does this all the websites do this they will get as many commentaries as they can and and it's great for them to have free commentaries because they're out of print and they did put the effort in there to code these things so it works in accordance so kudos for accordance and, and logos as well for coding these and coding them for their programs but they're not really useful for academic research it gives the impression of having a vast library without the substance of a good research library. So don't fall for the trap of these. They're not great to use for research. And what it means is probably you have Tyndale, if not use NetBible, drag whatever, either of those to the very top of your list and those will be the commentaries that will be the default commentaries in accordance. Writings, I don't really use, again, not my area. Uh, history, I don't have a big library here and it's not our area. Dictionaries, here's an important one. This is now in biblical studies, a dictionary is an accordance. I'm sorry, a dictionary is uh, an encyclopedia. A dictionary is an encyclopedia, but we call them dictionaries. What we think of in terms of, of linguistic dictionaries, like an like a Oxford English dictionary or Webster's dictionary, those are called lexicons. So even the category dictionaries here is not going to give you like a Greek or Hebrew lexicon. It's going to give you Bible dictionaries, Bible encyclopedias. And again, among those, the best that you that I have anyway are going to be Erdman's, number one, Holman, number two. The rest are either not as useful, that I mean, they're fine, but I don't use these very much, or like Easton's and, and uh, Hitchcock and Smith, they're not going to be uh, academically valuable to use. So I just ignore all those. So Erdman's is number one, Holman, number two put those to the top of the list. And you drag them top of, to the top of the list. For translator notes, yeah, so you drag things like this. You, you grab onto it with your mouse, and then you move it up or down. Net Nets notes, uh, yeah, this is, I don't have many, none of these are terribly useful. I don't use them anyway as translator notes, so I can ignore those. Now for us, back to lexicons. As I said before, we set this up already in the preferences menu. Um, but you should also double check here. It's nice to see book covers as well. And so I put them in the order that I think they are going to be useful. Concise DCLs, complete lexicon, number one. BDB is complete. It's, a, it's one that's been used for a very long time, so you should you know, be familiar with it. Uh, but it's number two on my list. TLOT is an outstanding one. And it's number three on the list because it won't have every single word. But if it does have a word there, it's going to be a very good article on it. Number four is Kohlenberger Mounts, which is, it's a good introductory basic lexicon. It's not very mm, robust. Glossary is fine and Strong's at the end. That's right. That's, that's the order it should be in if you have all these books. Biblical studies. Um, and a lot of bloatware. Nothing is useful there, at least for my, for my area of expertise and the kind of studying that we do in university. Nothing there is great. 
same for the theological. Yeah, they're not not useful for modern research. Uh, for grammars, let's see. Uh, we don't. You can read these. Uh, Robertson, Coney Bear. These are all outstanding older resources, but they're more advanced than we're going to need for this class. And even in a Greek or Hebrew class, we use other grammatical aids than those. They're not as useful. Devotionals, don't really use them. They're interesting. The chronological readings I put have on top because that's probably most interesting to me. These others are fine. Spurgeon is fine. They're just not giving us information that we'd use for academic research, but they're not meant to. So that's, that's all fine there. Um, anything else? This doesn't really matter either. I just, while I'm here. Greek studies. This is the other thing that will, oh, not Greek studies. Dysman. Wow. Dysman is historic. Uh, mm, fine. We did nothing there that's really useful when I use accordance anyway. Greek lexicons. Let's see other books. Yeah, no. Lexicons. So for me, the preferences, oh, why is Strong's on top? That's a mistake. So Loanida, for me, be number one. T L N T. Hmm, that should be in the third spot. Let's go. Thayer. Let's make that number three. So let's go. Low and Ida number one. Mount number two. Um, Thayer is good. It's older, but it's good for including a different, slightly different data set that's useful for us. And then T L N T. Uh, again, outstanding resource. Won't have every single word in there, but it, it belongs in the top four for sure. Uh, yeah, Strong's goes there. At the end of the list, the rest. If we use Septuagint, it'll go here automatically. It's fine. Uh, and these other two, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so for reordering them, uh, this is the order I'd recommend. And if you don't have all these books, that's fine. I have more than you probably do. And if not, that's great. Well, well done. Um, but those are the... That's the order of the books I'd recommend for your Greek lexicons when we get there. Study Bibles. I don't use study Bibles. They're not useful because they don't tell you how they got to their conclusions or who's writing them. Um, they're not useful for research. They're useful if you are reading the Bible and want a very quick idea. But again, the ideas aren't vetted. They're often subject to committee. They're just not useful for research. But again, not everything has to be about research. Semitic studies, yeah, parsing parallels. It's fine. Okay. So to recap of the things to do uh, in accordance, first, you set your preferences. You go to f edit preferences and it'll open in a second. And we go to amplify. This is the most important one for us because this determines what happens when you click on words or verses. Set up your English dictionary, uh, your English encycl Bible encyclopedia, Bible dictionary. Uh, set your Greek lexicon preference, your Hebrew lexicon preference, uh, and the rest is fine. Uh, you can try these other buttons, but this is how I set mine up. You can do what you prefer. That's the most important one is Amplify. You can also check under... Yeah, I think that was it. The rest were okay, but not as important. All right, so there's that. Once you finish all that, then you open up this menu bar, and it'll be about that size. You go through, you scroll down to Tools, and you find the most useful tools for us, which is going to be commentaries if you have them, because sometimes they have grammatical information in there. Bible dictionaries if you have them, because they're going to have some grammatical information in there as well. But really, Hebrew lexicons and Greek lexicons, those are the, the categories that are most important to set up. Again, the reason it matters is because the number one spot on each of these lists will be the default when you right-click on a word or double-click or triple-click on a word. So we're setting up your default uh, accordance stuff. That's probably not the right word. The, uh, the default apparatus for accordance. That's what we're trying to set up today. And that's it for today. This is the end of the video. We'll have other videos for other functions, but that's how you set up your accordance.